This is a full room of people in 2024 playing SOCOM 2 online. So I am about to play SOCOM 2 online in the year 2024. This game came out in 2003 and is still living online through the support of a community. So I'm gonna to link to below the link if you wanna figure out how to do this. You can do this both through the disc and a PS2 console if you still have those things, or you could do it through emulation. It works either way. I have the actual disc and a PS2, and I'm doing that right now. It is crazy to return to this game. After 20 years, I played a lot of the original SOCOM 1 and 2 online. SOCOM 3 kind of ruined things when they added vehicles and the way they designed the maps around multiple objectives, as opposed to SOCOM 1 and 2. Each map was designed around a, a singular objective, which is what I think lent uh, or uh, allowed those maps to really flourish the way that they did, allowed, the, allowed them to be as memorable as they are. So we're going to uh, jump into this. This is a full room of people in 2024 playing SOCOM 2 online, despite, you know, the, the, the several hoops you have to jump through to play this online. Again, even though it isn't all that complicated, it still requires some effort to do this. And it just shows you how popular <laughs> this game was and in some ways still is. All right, the game is counting down. It is starting. The nostalgia is pouring in. Fishhook, great map. If you weren't around for the original SOCOM or SOCOM 2, it's going to be hard probably to jump into this now and find any enjoyment. A lot of the fun from this really comes through the nostalgia of it, remembering how much time I spent playing this game. That said, the way the maps were designed for SOCOM and SOCOM 2. To, to me, it, some of the best map designs in any shooter ever, even to this day. And that is because these maps are designed around singular objectives. Look at this, look at this dude. <laughs> this game, man. The fact that you can climb. Am I zooming you? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I feel like the, the main reason why this game has not been remastered to this point, one of the main reasons is because you simply cannot say terrorists win in a video game nowadays. <laughs> but also, you know, this does not play like a modern game. The controls are fine, but there's some there's some awkwardness to it. Like to throw a grenade, I have to uh, go to the menu. Hold, sorry, that's the wrong button. <laughs> hold down uh, R2, use the D-pad to go up, select the grenades. Oh my God. It's just going to be death after death. The voices, the sound effects, so much about this game is just delivering my deep nostalgia on a silver platter. Another reason why this game wouldn't hold up today is there's no run button. You could remaster this, maybe add some tweaks, change some things, some quality of life stuff. But adding a run button, you know, that would change the dynamic of how a map like this plays out, which in some ways could break it. Like, look at... <laughs> <laughs> Not that this game isn't already broken. Oh, I'm so smart. Pressing R2 to shoot. Like I'm playing a modern game. <laughs> R1 is the shoot button in this. R1. Oh, man. The, <laughs> the frame rate is as bad as ever. Especially Fishhook. Fishhook was never good in terms of frame rate. <laughs> this guy... Uh, it, it's hard to get frustrated at this point. I spent so many years being frustrated at my inability to be great at this game, despite my hundreds of hours playing SOCOM 1 and 2. I'm sure at some point it, it probably hit the thousand. The best players, not saying I was one, but you would learn how to switch to your grenades while you were still moving, which required you to still hold an aim with the joysticks, but hold down R2 while you're then switch to the D-pad to go to your grenades while you're playing. Select the grenades all while you have fingers on, on the joysticks as well. So you, you're kind of using fingers for double duty, switching between buttons or using the same thumb for a button and the joystick while you're still moving to throw a grenade. Anyways, it became a whole, it's a whole thing. Nowadays, you're just like, why isn't the grenade button on a trigger?
Are you kidding me? Come on. These servers operate on the honor system. I'm not sure if they could tell if people are going to be cheating or are, or, or are cheating. I'm not sure if, you know, it's unlikely. Look at this guy. Really? 17-2? I don't know about that. It's it's unlikely that if somebody's cheating, they'd be able to catch them. I just think it, God, if you're going to go through the trouble to play SOCOM 2 in 2024, I would hope to God you're not going to cheat. Like how much of a loser <laughs> do you have to possibly be to cheat at a game that is over 20 years old? That's right. That's right. Don't fuck with me. Look, I'm not going to lie. I think a cleaned up version of this game with 60 frames per second, clearly, uh, you know, just just polish up the visuals a little bit, would do well today, especially right now. There is this trend towards boomer shooters, and I, I'm not sure I even put that in that, in that category because that boomer shooter is more about, you know, doom style shooters. But a classical tactic style online shooter like this, oh, nice job, would have have appeal today especially i mean it has to run smoothly this game you can see the the many frame rate issues that it has and just the, the stuttery animations clean all that up get the same maps polish them up keep everything else the same i think there is some potential there it's still fun like i i've played a few maps now i have not felt the need to jump off which honestly has kind of surprised me so the developer is behind socom zipper interactive were shut down in 2012 and not much has really been done with SOCOM since. They also developed MAG, if anyone remembers that. MAG stood for Massive Action Game, I believe, or Mega Action Game. I think it was Massive Action Game. And that was a disaster. Uh, <laughs> at least it was, it was ambitious in its scope. Almost tried to be like a, a persistent online shooter, almost in the, in the massively multiplayer online sense even though it wasn't but it you know it was ambitious it was just never all that fun um socom one and two are the best thing zipper ever did oh come on yeah that's right you died that's right that's right two kills ah. didn't see that coming did you Yeah, the frame rate, man. <laughs> the frame rate. <laughs> the frame rate on this game is insane. Insanely terrible. Forget 60. I, I, forget 30. I want to, like, a, a steady 20 would be nice. <laughs> At points, it is just ridiculous. So I actually got to visit Zipper Interactive back before they sh shut down. I believe it was, it was either 2010 or 2011. It was before the release of... SOCOM 4 on PS3. I had a SOCOM website back in the day. TheRealSOCOM.com. I believe it's still up. Someone else is running it. We had a podcast, website, and uh, we were invited out there to check out SOCOM 4 before it released. It, it, it was their attempt to try and, you know, speak to the hardcore SOCOM player and get their feedback and an attempt to kind of hype the game up before its release. The trip was great. It was in, there in Seattle. The trip was great. It, the game at the time... We enjoyed ourselves, but it was hard to judge a game until you really sit with it for a bit. Like playing it at an event for a couple days, the the whole spectacle of it, of just being flown out to Seattle, check out this new game, having not seen it before and really not knowing what to expect. I remember it being impressive. And again, this is the first time they're bringing SOCOM, the SOCOM franchise to a more powerful platform in the PS3. It of course looked a lot better. It had somewhat of the feel of SOCOM, but for me, it came down to, once again, the maps. The maps were simply not designed around a singular objective. And for me, that was the downfall. I'm sure there were other aspects of the game that maybe st still hold up today if I went to try and play it. But it was just not the same thing. It was this attempt to try and modernize SOCOM in a way where it just didn't quite feel like SOCOM anymore. Well... That is SOCOM 2 Online. If you have any nostalgia at all for the original SOCOM games, this may be, will, will likely be, the only way you're ever going to be able to play them again. It is very unlikely 
that Sony's going to remaster SOCOM 2, especially at this point. There was a campaign for years <laughs> to try to get so Sony to return and, and at the very least remaster the original SOCOM 2 or SOCOM. And it, it just never, it never happened. So 20 years later, over 20 years later, I don't think they would do it now. This will be the only way you can play SOCOM 2 online. Check it out. The audience is there. There are people playing it. If you missed the game, this is your chance to do it. I will say, if you are new to SOCOM, you are likely not going to enjoy <laughs> playing SOCOM 2, at least this SOCOM 2 online. If Sony were to remaster the game and improve the frame rate, make the visuals a little nicer, just gussy it up a little bit, it may have some appeal right now because of this, this trend towards boomer shooters, but there'd have to be a lot of quality of life changes that I, I, I'm not sure Sony would be willing to put the effort in to actually do. And even then, if they do them, that may in some cases turn off the original fan base that want the uh, obtuse control scheme where you have to go through a menu to pick your grenade before you throw it. So the, the, this is always the balance that Sony has had with SOCOM and why I think they've never brought it back. It's trying to please the base that cares about SOCOM while trying to find a new audience. And doing both of those things is near impossible. You have to either serve one or the other. And if you're serving a new audience, then why bother even using the original SOCOM name? Might as well use an original franchise. And the original SOCOM base at this point, you know, those people are out there. Those gamers that were back on this game in 2003, 2004, they're out there still. But are there enough of them to really justify a new SOCOM release? I would love to say yes, but I think the answer is no. So this may be your only shot. Check it out. It is worth it. I think at the very least, you'll get a kick out of it like I did.